need. So first of all, good morning again. And we have an updated mission, value, and purpose. MVP statement. Pastor T and the Wesley leadership team presents our updated MVP statement. The mission statement, Wesley is an historic faith-based community of believers showing God's love by serving its congregation and communities through authentic relationships in a nurturing family environment. The values we hold, we are a loving, inclusive community because we value diversity. We are generous givers of our time, talents, and treasures because we value stewardship. We are faithful to learning and living God's word uh, because we value disciplineship. We honor our past while being open to what God has in store for us because we value innovation. Our purpose statement, Wesley exists to show God's love for all people through serving and caring for the whole person and being the hands and feet of Jesus. Our Resilience Center and Food Bank, there are volunteer opportunities each Wednesdays and Fridays of every week. On Wednesdays, help is needed to prepare, pack, to prepare and pack the food bags. On Fridays, help is needed at 11.30 to prepare for the 1 p.m. food distribution. If you can make time in your schedule, please join them. Our upcoming events, daily Wesley Incestory Prayer, uh, 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. September the 10th, 12 to 3, Wesley Leadership Board meeting. Every Wednesday, prayer call is at 8 a.m. The number is listed in your bulletin along with the code. Everyone is invited to Wednesday morning prayer time to lift up your prayer concerns and to receive strength. Um, next week's lectionary scriptures are Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 2, verses 8 through 13, and James. 1, 17 through 27. Our Desert Southwest Conference training opportunities advance lay servant class. The class offering lay pastoral caregiving when it is on Friday, September the 20th from 6 to 9, Saturday, September the 21st from 9 to 4.30 p.m. It will be held at Dove of the Desert United Methodist Church. The course offers insight into the lifespan and dynamics of contemporary life to help church leaders reach out with God's love and care to others. There is a text, um, lay personal caregiving, and you are required to have a text prior to the course starting. The cost for this course is $15, and it is payable when you get there. Um, when we first started announcing the advanced lay servant class, it seemed like it was so far away. It is just around the corner, so if you've not made plans, um, do so, because it's coming up mighty quick. The cares, I mean, the concerns and prayers for the body of Christ and the world. During your personal worship time, please pray for those listed in our bulletin and those who are not. Should you know of someone who's in need of prayer, um, please let us know so that the whole congregation can pray for, for those. Um, pray for our East District um, churches. They are listed and they will be praying for us as well. Our care team intentionally calls and connects with those we know who are not in our pews or online. Um, join them. Please chat with Mr. Miller or Miss Bay. Please let them know if you know of anyone 
who was in need um, to in be included in this team ministry. And on the back of our bulletin, ways to give online. Uh, you <clears throat> can use Tidely or Zelle, and the QR code is there. You just put your little phone up to it, it will take you to either Tidely or Zelle. It made it oh so convenient for us. All right, that, unless there's anyone else that has any announcements, I believe I have covered them all. Our scripture reading today will come from the New Testament, the, uh, from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. And it's found in your pew Bibles on page 195 of the New Testament. Pastor gave me one with bold writing. I am going to read from that. I always forgot my glasses anyway, so I'm like, okay, God. <laughs> okay. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against blood and flesh, but against the rulers against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having prevailed against everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and belt your waist with the truth and put on the breastplate of righteousness, and lace up your sandals in preparation for the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication, to that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak a message, uh, when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known the boldness, the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of God for the people of God. Now we'll have our community. Priya? Good morning, church. If you remember last week, I talked with you about our community prayer and that that would be a time for uh, one of us to pray uh, for each other. And uh, the person I had expected to pray today is not here. So do I have any volunteers to pray before I call you out? All right, I'm going to ask Mr. Connolly to come to the mic and pray. Amen. Be ye also ready. Pray for our community. Good morning, church family. Father God, we thank you and bless your name, Lord God. We thank you for the sacred place, Lord God, for your people to come together um, to worship you, Lord God. We pray for our community, Lord God. We pray for safe streets, Lord God, and safe schools, Lord God. We pray for travel mercies and highways and bowels, Lord God. Continue to keep your angels camped around us, Lord God. Allow us to be mindful to help those in need when we actually see them. Not question what, what they're going through, but be the blessing and help them to get through it. So glory to your name, Lord God, because you empowered us and you charged us to take care of the poor, not question why they got there, Lord. So we have to be a living example of you in the community for those that may not know you. So when they go to sleep at night, that they know they was going through their trials and tribulations, but some unknown person, by God, had blessed.
bless them and allow them to get through the calamity. So these are things we pray. In Jesus' first time we pray. Amen. 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 Let us stand together and sing standing in the need of prayer. How many of you are standing in the need of prayer? Sitting in the need of prayer. Laying, kneeling in the need of prayer. I know I am. Yes. How about you? Let us sing together.
trust in Jesus, found on page 462.
And when the priest came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord. And so that the priest, so much so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. And he said, O oh Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven, above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love with your servants who walk before you with all of their hearts. The covenant that you kept for us, for your servants, my father, David. As you declare to him, you promised with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep your servant, my father, David, that which you have promised him saying, there shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel. If only your children look to their, look to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed that you promise to your servant, my father David, but will God indeed dwell on earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and this plea. O oh Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house. The place of which you said my name shall be there. That you may heed the prayer that your servant prays for this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Oh, hear in heaven your dwelling place. Hear and forgive. Likewise, when foreigners who are not of your people Israel come from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand, your outstretched arms. When foreigners come and pray toward this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and do whatever the foreigner asks of you so that all the people of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people of Israel. And so they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built. Inside the human spirit, there rises a desire to seek, know, experience, and please God. Sometimes there is a question as to whether God will meet us. Yet, on other occasions, we boldly claim God's presence and feel God's special touch on our individual lives in public. God is the promise. This and what I bring for you is a scripture of Solomon once he had finished the temple. Once he had completed building the temple, this was his prayer unto God as they brought out the ark. And his prayer was so desperate, it was not just for himself, but it was for us. It was for others, it was for all people. God draws a circle and writes, I will never disappoint. The scripture I 
read is an example of God's uh, presence and how he never disappoints. God makes promises to his people and he never disappoints. How many of us long for the words reflected in the classic song of the great, the late great, Michael Jackson, <laughs> where he says, I'll be there. Solomon's prayer 
of the temple's dedication begins with a statement of promise that God will give his love. However, for Israel to maintain its favorite nation status, it must meet the conditions that God laid down. Wholehearted devotion to him. Wholehearted devotion to him. That means he not sharing. He doesn't want a piece of the pie. He wants and deserves the whole pie. This accomplishment of building the temple would occur if the people walk with him in obedience and trust. The question was not if God would love them, rather would they love God? And we have the same question. The question isn't that if God loves us, it's do we love God? Beyond our words, do we love God with our actions? Because we can all say, yeah, God, I love you. How many people you tell you love, but you don't really want to hang out with? Objective view 
so that we can see a little further, see a little clearer, get some clarity about what's going on. And God is that person. He is with us. We are able to touch him, yet he is objective enough to see the whole picture and to be able to help us. Only God can free us and help us. God's love is concerned with our circumstances. Think about it. Think about your circumstances right now. And I want you to know that God is concerned with them. He abides with us and works with us. He is graciously making a difference in our lives. God inclines his heart, his ears, and his eyes toward us. He can have, we can have a genuine confidence in this great God that Solomon speaks of in the text. Verse 41 through 43, Solomon speaks of God's promises that he answered. Finally, the Lord answers all life's needs. The Lord answers all life's needs. He doesn't leave anything out. He doesn't go down it like a grocery list like we do. We have, we make a grocery list and we might get some of the things and go, oh, I'm not going to get this one. But God knows all of our circumstances and he doesn't cross any of them out. He is aware of them all. He doesn't go, oh, I can't do that or I can't afford that. There is none of that in God. He answers all of life's needs. Yeah. He answers our questions. Yeah. He even answers our sin. Yeah. Our God of promise comes to all who genuinely seek to know his forgiveness his love, and his presence. Step by step, God will lead us in faith if we follow. Our lives can be built on him. Our needs is to worship God in spirit and in truth. And the question is, will you? Will you allow God to love you? Will you allow God to meet your needs? Will you allow God in? Will you believe God and worship him in spirit and in truth? Will you worship God in spirit and truth? Will you have the faith to believe? That God will be there. That all you have to do is call his name. And he'll be there. Will you make a pact with God to live out your salvation on earth every day and everywhere? everywhere? Will you believe that he'll reach out his hand to you? We must remain faithful, faithful in all that we do. Remain faithful as we call his name, because when we call his name, what? He'll be there. Amen. The Lord is our strong tower. The Lord in this scripture this week is Solomon prayer and thanks and acknowledgement of God's presence and awareness to be able to fulfill that massive task of building the temple. The temple is now done, but what Solomon understands is that it is God 
not the building. It is God who makes the difference. It is God who loves us. It is God who answers our prayers. It is God in whom we can depend. So at this time, I'm going to open the altar for anyone who wants to come for prayer. I also open the altar as an invitation to discipleship. You may be looking for a church home. We welcome you here. Come, the altar is open.
go from this place, but never your presence, oh God. May you open our ears that we may hear and our eyes that we may see. Allow our hands and our feet to minister and touch the lives of those on the outside of these walls. May your name be lifted and you be glorified through our lives as we spread your love everywhere we go. The free threefold, amen. 